Welcome to Downtown City. My name is Blythe Baxter. My dad and I just moved here from my sleepy hometown. And this is where I live now. Well, I live above the littlest pet shop, actually, with my dad. I love fashion, and I'm always doodling in my sketchbook. I'm hoping the sights and sounds of the city give me plenty of inspiration. The big city can be a pretty scary place, so I'm also hoping I'll make new friends soon. As I headed up to my new apartment, two girls surrounded me. New friends? Unfortunately not. They wanted me to go shopping, but after they insulted my clothes, I said, no thanks. They were so mean. They told me that the littlest pet shop was going out of business, and they sounded happy about it. Of course, their father owned the competition, the largest ever pet shop. But seriously? That's how I first met the Biscuit Twins. Whitney is the daughter of Fisher Biscuit, who owns the largest ever pet shop. She and her sister Brittany seemed nice when I first met them, but things quickly turned sour when I refused to follow them around and do whatever they wanted. Maybe someday they will change their ways, but I'm not holding my breath. The Biscuit Twins made me think about how much I missed my old town, but I just reminded myself that downtown city was bound to be full of adventures. And I love adventures! While I was unpacking, I discovered a secret passageway in my wall. It was a dumbwaiter. When I climbed in, I ended up crashing down to the bottom floor right into the littlest pet shop. When the dust settled, I couldn't believe what was happening. The pets were all talking about me, and I could understand them! What the what?! When I started talking back to them, the pets were a little scared at first and hid amongst the shop's supplies. I was still a little shocked myself, but was able to coax each pet out of hiding to introduce themselves. Zoe is a former model. Pepper is the comedian of the group. Vinny is a fantastic dancer. Well, he hopes to be one day. Minka shares my love for adventure and art. Sunil is a genius at magic. Russell is the calm voice of reason. Penny Ling is super sweet and loves rhythmic gymnastics. Zoe Trent is a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel with a talent for singing. She seems to love being the center of attention and being in the spotlight. Something tells me that she's also a diva with a hidden, kind heart. Penny Ling is a gentle, soft-spoken, and very sweet panda. Her talent lies in gymnastics, but she is particularly fond of ribbon dancing. She's usually very graceful, but can be a bit clumsy, sometimes as a result of the other pets messing her up. Russell Ferguson is a hedgehog with a talent for organization. He is somewhat uptight, but he always makes sure the plans go through and keeps things from getting too out of control. Something tells me the other pets are very lucky to have him around. Vincent Vinny Terrio is a gecko with a talent for dancing. A somewhat goofy gecko, Vinny can be a little bit loud and excitable, but he's a good friend to the other pets and tries to play things cool. He's a top-notch dancer, but he still messes up a lot due to being sort of clumsy. Sunil Nevla is a mongoose with a talent for magic. Usually his magical tricks come in handy and can really wow the crowd, but he sometimes messes up. Apparently explosions are a pretty common occurrence during his tricks. Pepper Clark is a little skunk who loves to crack jokes and play usually harmless pranks on others. Sometimes her jokes can go too far, but she doesn't seem to realize it until it's too late. Being a skunk, Pepper hates it when others reference a skunk's natural musk. Minka Mark is a pink spider monkey with a talent for abstract art. She loves to spend her days painting and chatting it up or searching someone's head for food. Most likely because she is a monkey, she just can't help but be distracted by even the simplest of things. Just then, the owner of Littlest Pet Shop, Mrs. Twombly, walked in. She seemed very sweet. Turns out these adorable pets are all part of her pet day camp. But unfortunately, the largest ever pet shop was scooping up all her business. And if things didn't get better, she'd have to close down. I was so sad thinking the shop might close. Those poor pets. Mrs. Twombly might seem a little insane at first, but she's really sweet. 
She doesn't know that the pets can talk, but she still treats each and every one of them like a family. I have to respect her brave fashion sense, even if I don't always agree with it. When I returned to the apartment, my room was a huge mess. The pets had overheard Mrs. Twombly and sneaked up to my room to ask for my help, seeing as I could understand animals and all. Again, what the what? I knew we would come up with a great idea soon, but first we needed to clean up my messy room. I started my first day of school just trying to get my locker open. I tried like five times, but it wouldn't budge. Luckily, some really nice kids stepped up and helped me out. Jasper Jones had my locker last year and showed me how to get it unstuck. Jasper was the first of my human friends to talk to me on my first day at school. I'm glad to have friends like Jasper, since none of the pets can really follow me to school. Jasper is rather enthusiastic and outgoing and likes to blog and direct. Sue is a bit of a jock, with quite a knack for sports. This may be why she can be extra passionate at times and maybe a little easy to frustrate. Regardless, she's a super nice girl and I'm glad to call her one of my best friends. Young Mia is somewhat soft-spoken, but I can tell she's an intelligent girl. She has an almost encyclopedic knowledge of things, which is somewhat creepy. Along with Jasper and Sue, Young Mia is one of my best friends in downtown city. His friends, Sue Patterson and Young Me Song, were also nice. They all knew about the Littlest Pet Shop and were very sad to hear it was closing. They also knew all about the Biscuit Twins. I wasn't surprised to learn they were the official mean girls of the school. My new friends invited me to eat lunch with them and I was so excited, but also a little distracted. I still had to come up with an idea to save the Littlest Pet Shop. Suddenly, the Biscuit Twins walked up and asked me to eat with them. When I said no thanks again, they grabbed my sketchbook and tore up the pages. I was so upset, but it gave me a great idea. Combine my designs with each pet's talents and we could have an awesome fashion show to save the pet shop. I needed to piece the designs back together right away. Once I had the sketches back together, I told Mrs. Twombly and the pets about my plan and everyone loved it. When the pets cheered, all Mrs. Twombly heard was animal chatter, but I knew better. The show would stir up excitement about my pet fashions and the only place to buy them, Littlest Pet Shop. The event had to happen tomorrow if we were going to save the Littlest Pet Shop, so I worked all night with the pets, sketching ideas, gathering fabric, and sewing their outfits. The pets were so helpful. Just before the show was going to start, Jasper rushed over with bad news. The Biscuit Twins had sabotaged our fashion show flyers by making it look like we were giving away free money to people who came to the show. That's money we sure didn't have, and people could get really angry. But we knew the show must go on. If our guests loved the outfits, maybe they would forget about the money? Sure, that's the spirit. But first, I had to get the pets ready for the runway. The Biscuit Twins kept trying to sabotage the show. They tried sneaking in disguised as cats and climbed up into the rafters to dump chocolate icing and kitty litter on us. Fortunately, Russell saved the day. And in spite of everything, the fashion show was a huge success. There was a large crowd, the pets showed off their talents, and my fashions. And everyone had a great time! What a finale! The next day, the littlest pet shop was packed full of customers. Pet owners were buying my Blythe style fashions for their pets, and Mrs. Twombly was having trouble keeping up with all the orders at the register. I told her I would be happy to help, and that's when she hired me to work at the Littlest Pet Shop, the best job a girl could ask for. I was so proud to save the pet shop, and so happy that I would get to spend more time with my new pet friends. The end. <laughs>